Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. Fantastic to have you here. First things first, let's thank our sponsor, and that is NordVPN. You can start protecting your internet experience today, getting 77% off a three-year plan at nordvpn.com forward slash forge using code forge. Let's get right into it. We are here on day three of trying to make a fine Damascus chef's knife. I am thrilled to bring you along. We just pulled this out of the subcritical anneal, which is something I've never done. And we are gonna go straight into profiling this and then starting to rough grind the bevel. Thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoy. making solid progress. Here is where we're at. We have our profile in there. We have ground into this heel so that we have a hard stop, so that we don't have it be narrower at the heel than anywhere else. We want it to be the thickest part, so that then as you're cutting, the blade stops there, and you still have handle clearance. On that note, center screen right now, we could remove a few thousandths there, but this is a 36 grit. That's not something to be majorly worried about. We are very close on the profile. I have then roughed in the faces, or rather just ripped off the scale, and I have been doing all of this with a well-used 36 grit belt, because that scale is hard stuff. It'll tear up a new belt, and then it's just, it's, just, it's just not nice to destroy your new belts with the horrible forged scale. After we took off the bulk of the scale, with the 36 grit on the flat pattern. We then came in here and roughed in that integral bolster transition. And so this piece is now ready for us to switch to a shiny new belt. Rough in that bevel just a little more and it is gonna be ready for hardening. Here we go. to say that we are ready for heat treat. Well, specifically just hardening and then tempering. Here is what Mareko explained to me for how he does his chef's knives. After I've done my rough grinding, before heat, my final heat treat and hardening, this is a pretty straightforward steel, so it's, it's a 1080, 15, and 20 high carbon mixture. So when you go into heat treat, you get up to critical, it's pretty much you don't have to let it soak to let it, uh, you know, let the carbon come into proper solution. It pretty much is almost instantaneously in solution. So I usually do let it soak for maybe a couple, just a couple minutes, pull it out and quench it. And, and so that's all it's going to be. I've got this thing rough ground up. Even while rough, it looks better than that finished one that I made last year. And I'm going to simply heat it up. It's not going to need a lot of soak time, just enough to get the bolster to hot. And we're going to quench it in some fast quench oil. You'll notice I've got the doors of the forge open right now, and I have a pyrometer reading me off the temperature. And I'm just dropping the forge temperature. I need to go about another 100 degrees Celsius lower. This knife will fit the whole way in, so we might as well get the forge to the best temperature possible to heighten our chances of success. We're getting that temperature down. Actually, no, I just broke my pyrometer. It got too hot. No! Well, you know what that means. We're going in blind. In we go. Let's let that heat up. Here we go. 
All right, let's check it for straightness. No, that's not so bad. Oh, that's actually pretty freaking good. It's got a slight bow out this way. Let's see if we can straighten that with a little pressure before it fully hardens. Still got just a little bit of time. Needs just a little more. A little more pressure. Oh yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. We can grind that in. Brill, the final cooling in the oil. Down there, let's wipe off the excess. That was too easy. Hope it got hard. Moment of truth. Thank you very much. I'll take that. That'll do. That'll do just nicely. It's hard, it's time to temper it. So into the oven we go at about 195 degrees Celsius. I'll sit that like that, and this is gonna wanna do ideally two cycles of each two hours for a total tempering time of four hours. Now why is this so important, Alec? If you want this progression for later for making your own knife, screenshot it now. Now why is it that we're going to all this effort to temper it? It's taking four hours of time out of a busy workshop day. Well, it's because in its hardened state, straight out of the quench, if we were to put a fine edge on it, and an edge is just this crazy phenomenon. The edge of a bladed tool is this crazy thing where we exert so so much pressure upon it and expect so much out of it. You know, because of course, this having such a tiny measurement to it means that you put five pounds of pressure on the top of the handle of a knife, you're exerting crazy amounts of pounds per square inch on that particular tiny little bit of material. So if when applying that pressure, we break it because it's too brittle and that snaps off, we're then ending up with just this blunt broken edge, which can't cut anything. Then it needs to be completely reground. We definitely don't want that. We don't want it too brittle. And that's a factor that comes as a result of the hardening. What we want is we want more flexibility to it while still being hard enough to retain that edge. We want it to be slightly more in the direction of being able to be flexible so that upon those great cutting forces, this edge is not going to be too brittle and break, but will flex and withstand the forces and be tough enough to stay put. And so that's why we temper it, because we would rather this flex and spring back to where it is than completely break and have to be reground. It has done its two cycles in the tempering oven the cooking oven too. It is now ready to start grinding it. Key things here, I'm making sure that I cool this after every couple of passes so we don't overheat it and destroy the temper, and ah, that we get a nice straight distal taper down towards the tip. So I need to be very careful to keep checking it for straightness. Also, I need to make sure that my edge is centered to the bolster the whole way as well. So let's get right to it. My edge is still really thick, so we're gonna thin that down. I'm gonna take a pass at a much steeper angle than I was before, like that. That thins it down. Now I'm gonna try and bring that back. Same on the other side. I want to make sure that this blade is centered to the bolster. Super important. I'm just taking as much time as I possibly can on just lining everything up. So at this point, we've got to have a think about the measurement of what it is that we need. And since I am unabashedly, unashamedly, just literally trying to do my best to copy one of Mareko's knives. Let's flash back to that call, because I think he told me. So for me, the way I like to grind my blade, I'll take the thickness where the spine meets the bolster, I'll take that to about 140 thousandths, 150 thousandths, and I'll take the edge down to about 20 thousandths of an inch, and then, of course, a full distal taper. My spine right now is about 200 thousandths. My edge right now is about 50 thousandths. So we are a ways off. We need to take still 70 thousandths of an inch off the spine to get it down to about that width at 140. And of course that edge is just a long ways off, but that's fine. We're still at 36 grit. We're gonna stay there, keep thinning this down a little bit. And then uh, I think we've got to do an S grind. we 
we've got some great progress going on. However, that spine is still too thick. It's still uh, about 30, 40 thou too thick back up here. It's about the right thickness for the base of it halfway down. We've got lots to do. I am taking my sweet time trying to get it as even as possible. And so every couple of passes, I'm looking at it carefully, trying to, trying to evaluate as best as I can whether it's straight and square. The funny thing is it took coming out here, putting it down, taking a second, then looking at it again to spot that my edge has a warp that goes down and up here. And I have no idea if that is something that I can show you. It's extremely slight, but once you notice it, you can't not notice it. And what it certainly is not, is it is not acceptable. Fortunately, we've still got a good degree of thickness in our edge. And all I need to make sure I do, holy moly do I need to be careful with this, is that I take a very minimal amount of material off of this side and take all the material we need to take off of from that side. I also need to take note that my spine itself also follows that little trend of a slight upwards curve here. You know, it's tough because the whole mission here, the whole plan is to make a really fabulous knife and to make something that's so much better than this chef's knife I made last year. But the trouble is, is that it's a year ago. I can't accurately remember. I can't, it's not so vivid in my mind, the problems I encountered, the mistakes I made and how those mistakes came to be there. And so it means that it's like, well, okay, am I making the same mistake? I don't know. That's kind of what's going through my head. So I'm just trying to be cognizant at every step about what it is that I'm doing, cognizant at every step about not skipping steps and just trying my darndest to do a hell of a lot better than I did last year. And what is the next step though? The next step, before I reduce this some more, I'm going to work on this bolster transition. You will see that it is very rough still, still has the scale from the heat treat. So we're gonna get back in there with the small wheels on the grinder, get this transition looking neat before we tack the blade some more, thin it down some more, and make sure that it stays straight. One, two, three, four, five. I've got all my fingers. Woo! That was scary. NordVPN is our sponsor today, and I didn't know what a VPN was when I was just out in the world making knives and surfing the internet like a normal person. You know, you, why would I need it? I wouldn't know. Well, this is for old me, and this is for you if you don't know what a virtual private network is. Now, what is the general premise? First and foremost, it's to make your web browsing experience secure so that when you're entering your bank details and when you're entering your personal information, people aren't getting in there and hacking it quite as easily. So, that lathe right there. This is the internet. This is the website you are browsing on a normal connection without a virtual private network. This is connected to by your computer and it's just a simple old straight connection. Your computer tells this website to send it some data. Your computer receives the data. But you see, that is a big, big problem. Like, I mean, it can be dangerous because what if Mr. Forge the hacker over here decides to come in and very neatly intercept this neat little unsecure connection. All your personal information that was flowing through here destroyed. I don't know about destroyed, but they can see what it is that you're looking at. They can see where you're looking at it from. They can see all of this and it's bad. It means that you can get hacked. You can lose a lot of money. Not good. And so how do we avoid this? Well, we don't go straight to the anvil. In fact, we create a connection with NordVPN, the vice private network. He's on our team. He has only the best interests of our security at heart because we get the website to send information to the virtual private network 
network. And then our handy vice private network encrypts that information, which means that it jumbles it all up so a hacker can't get it before sending it to you. And the handy thing is, there are thousands of different VPN servers that Nord owns all around the world. So if you want to browse the internet like you're browsing from Australia, you can do it. If you want to browse the internet like you're browsing from America, you can do it. If you want to browse the internet like you're browsing from the UK, you can do it, which means that you can watch all sorts of streamed shows that you otherwise might not be able to watch without slowing down your connection at all. NordVPN is consistently an award winner in its category, which means that you don't have to worry about the VPN giving you a slow connection. This won't slow you down. All this does is neatly encrypt the connection between you and the internet so that you stay safe while you're browsing. NordVPN is offering you guys 77% off a three-year plan by going to nordvpn.com forward slash forge using the code forge at checkout. They're a great sponsor of the show and I am very, very thrilled to let you know about their products because I use it and love it every single day. It has been a pleasure bringing you along. Make sure you check out that link to Nord in the description. I'm looking forward to seeing you on the very next episode.